So a while ago I was asked if I had a tutorial video for how I made a spinning newspaper animation that I created a couple years ago. And so I thought I would finally take a moment and actually go over how I made the animation in After Effects. It's actually kind of a two-in-one video. We'll go over both the spinning newspaper as well as an old film look that ties everything together. So let's just play a quick video and take a look at kind of what some of the possibilities are with this and then we'll get right in and rebuild it. Alright, so let's start with a new composition. We can call it Spinning Newspaper. And then let's drop in some newspaper headlines. Really, any image you want to spin in will work. This doesn't have to be just newspapers. These are just a couple of custom newspaper headlines that I had. Then next we're going to set a couple initial keystones on opacity, rotation, scale, and position. We're going to set an opacity to zero. And then let's move about, say, four or five frames in and bring opacity back up to 100%. Next we'll go to about one second, and this is where we're gonna adjust the rotation scale and position, so we can just set a couple initial keystones there. Let's set the rotation just off a couple of degrees, so it's not perfectly upright, and then let's position the headline so that it fits really nicely inside our frame. Keeping a little bit of the, the black space on the side of the, the newspaper will actually allow us to see the newspaper stack up on top of each other, so that is fine. Next, let's go back to the beginning. We will tweak just the starting position a little bit so it can kind of like swoop in. Then let's set the rotation to, let's say four times 250 degrees. And then let's set the scale to about 5%. So now the newspaper should fly towards us, but it's a little clunky still. So let's add in some easy ease and that should kind of help smooth that initial start. And let's go to the graph mode and just kind of stretch that out a little bit, make that curve a little bit steeper. It should just kind of help smooth that transition just a little bit more so it's not just like right in your face right away. And that looks good, but there's a little bit too much of an arc with the, the position movement here. So let's go to the position and adjust that to be an easy ease as well. Then let's make that curve just a little bit steeper. All right, that looks a lot better, but the rotation is still a little bit chunky. And so to fix that, we're gonna wanna enable motion blur. If you don't already know, there are a few different things you need to enable for motion blur to work. There is the composition motion blur and the individual track motion blur. If these don't show up, it might be because your layer switches pane is off, which is found in the bottom left corner. You'll want to make sure that both of these motion blur toggles are on in order for motion blur to work. With that said, let's turn it on. Alright, so that looks good for this image. We're just going to copy all of the keystones and paste them into our next image. So this should get us a pretty close rough start to the positioning of the next one. However, we need to tweak a few things. So let's start by just rescaling the fit of the headline, like we want to be able to see all of the text. Um, however, we don't want it to be identical as far as where it lands, so we're going to just kind of tweak the rotation a little bit and get it to just kind of sit a little bit differently. However, you might notice that the scale got thrown off at the beginning as well, so we're going to have to throw that back to 5%. And that looks good. Just flip on the track motion blur and this image is also set. And so just repeat this process for as many images as you want to include, and we'll pick back up with positioning and adding in the old film effect. Alright, so I have finished adding the spinning effect to each of the individual remaining four images that I had. And now I'm positioning each track about four seconds apart, and so that will allow each image to just kind of stay there for a couple seconds. It doesn't necessarily have to be four seconds. You can make it as long as you need to, especially if you have longer headlines. 
um, just to allow time for people to actually read them. But for the most part, I like to at least try to maintain a steady tempo. Therefore, especially once you add in music, it kind of just has a nice rhythm to it. Either way, this seems to work well. There's some nice overlap between each headline. So why don't we create a new composition and we're going to call this Film Look. Hit OK and then we'll start by dragging our spinning newspaper composition into it. Next we're going to create a new solid and call it Black Spots. We're going to start by adding two effects to the solid. The first effect that you'll want to add is Invert and and the second effect is Fractal Noise. Let's put the Invert effect below Fractal Noise and we can turn it off for the time being. Then let's change the contrast of the noise to 250 and we'll set Brightness to negative 140. After that let's go to Transform and change the scale to 600. Lastly, we're going to add a short expression to the random seed under evolution options. To do this, you're going to want to alt click the little stopwatch next to the random seed. And that will open up this menu where you're going to want to type in time times 30. So what that will do is it'll change the value of the seed 30 times in one second. And since our frame rate is 30 frames per second, it will change it once per frame. So now we're going to want to change the blend mode here to multiply and re-enable the invert effect. And so now you can kind of see that every so often we have these little black dots appear on top of our footage that offer a pretty good representation of dust and any other little particles that might just so happen to be on the film. So now let's do some color correction. So we're going to start with a new adjustment layer and let's call this color correction. Next we're going to add a tint effect and then let's throw a curves adjustment on top of that. And lastly let's add some grain. If we go back up to our tint effect we can make the whites just a little bit yellow. I'll account for any sort of like fading in the film. And then let's just add a very very slight contrast curve. This will help just make everything pop just a little bit more. And so now if we come down to the grain effect, let's change the viewing mode to final output. And if we turn back on the newspaper layer, we can see, especially in the black text of the headline, just a very subtle grain that kind of really makes the still image look more like it is in fact video and not just a still image. So now let's duplicate our first layer, move it above the color correction layer and rename it white spots. Now we're not going to need the invert effect anymore. We can delete that or just move it out of the way. And then under fractal noise, we're going to want to go to transform and change the scale to 100 instead of 600. And so now we have white dots on a black background. So we're going to have to change the blending mode from multiply to add. And that's starting to look good, but the spots are just a little too bright, especially if we turn off the newspaper layer, we can see the dots almost too well. So to reduce that, we're just going to reduce the opacity slightly down to say 50%. Next, we're going to duplicate the white spots layer again and rename it to scratches. Then we're going to go to the fractal noise effect. Under transform, we're gonna uncheck uniform scaling, change the width to one, and the scale height to something like 10,000. So if we turn off all of the other layers, we should be able to see thin white lines that are representing our scratches on the film. However, these shouldn't change as frequently, so let's work our way back to the random seed of the fractal noise and change the expression to time times 15. This will leave each scratch up for two frames before changing. Now if we turn on all of the other layers, we can take a look at how this overlay is coming together. And it's just about there, but we should probably still add a vignette. So let's create a new solid and label it Vignette. Then let's take the pen tool and draw a quick circle mask around the side. Once you have a rough circle, invert it and feather out the edge a lot and we can adjust the expansion just a little bit to make it a little bit softer around the edges and then just kind of keep tweaking it until it feels right. 
Once the vignette's good, just maybe drop the opacity a little bit and then we can turn the newspaper layer back on and take a look at this. Okay, and if you don't want to see the background of the edge there, let's hop back into the spinning newspaper composition and adjust the final scale keystone so that there's not any background showing. Next, let's create our last composition and we're going to call this one the final spinning newspaper and we will add our film look composition into it. If you don't want it to start on white, we can just simply create a new black solid under the film look and drop it under the newspaper layer. So what we're going to do with our final composition is adding a bit of a jitter effect and a flicker to the footage so it isn't so perfectly stable. To do that, we're going to start by increasing the scale to 103% and then by alt clicking on the stopwatch, we're going to type in wiggle parentheses 15 comma 1 and what that's going to do is at a frequency of 15 times per second it is going to adjust the position by an amplitude of 1 and so now we're going to do the exact same expression to the opacity only this time we're going to use an amplitude of 7 and with that we have finished our film effect for the spinning newspaper animation but before we wrap up I wanted to briefly show you a couple more things so here we have a 4K version of the film texture that we had previously made. And what I did was I added a PNG cutout of a film frame and dropped a Gaussian blur over it. I then duplicated the layer and on the second layer, I added a wiggle expression that kind of helped give it a bit of a rolling film effect. And so with all that said, I hope that this video helped. If you have any questions, just leave me a message and I'll do my best to answer them. And also let me know if there's any other sort of videos that I should make in the future. Thank you and until next time.